All right, so here it is, the Springfield Armory Echelon. I'm gonna make this video as concise as I can, so if I go a little fast, don't worry. Just go back and watch. I'm gonna to try to section the video out so you can jump around to what you need to see. So starting off, what this comes with, it does come with a 17-round mag that has a base plate that makes it 20 rounds, and then you have a 17-round flush fit. They give you the uh, extension plate and base pad here to make your 17 rounder a 20 rounder. So that's really cool. They've got two other size uh, back straps. You have a medium installed on a medium uh, modular grip or grip module rather. So they are shipping with the medium and you can order small or large. Those will be shipping around August 15th. And then you have a couple of pin sets for different optic uh, platforms and we'll get to that. And that's just about it. You get a nice little soft case as well. And a couple of papers, you get a paper that shows where it has been test fired also. Which mine had a flyer, which was kind of funny. I laughed about it. But anyway, so I really like this handgun. It is a full-size duty size 9mm. So it is competing with the likes of the 17 Glock, the P320 SIG, and so on. Uh, a lot of people think that this looks very similar to a Walther PDP full-size. And I do have to agree. Uh, primarily the slide looks kind of similar but just taking a look at it I really it's, it's got that nice grip texture that you're used to seeing on like the Hellcat and Hellcat Pro and everything but they've just put it everywhere on this firearm I mean they've got it here where your thumb would rest on your firing hand as well as where your grip would be they've got it underneath the trigger well they've got it in front of the trigger well they have it on the takedown lever the resting pad the resting pad over here, the back plate, they've even got it on the end of the guide rod here. So it's just everywhere. And I do want to show you all that it is safe. Um, there's no magazine in there, obviously. So taking a look at it, it's really neat. It's a really neat firearm. It feels amazing. I swear it does. It feels very, very light. And I'll show you a chart right now I kind of put together of its competitors in the full size duty market that have optics capability. And as you can see here, you can stop the video and look at this. I'm not going to go through it because it would take too much time. But you can see the Springfield Armory Echelon weighs less than anybody else. And you can definitely tell. And it feels really good in the hand. It feels like you have a lot of grip and control over it. Which for a full-size, duty-size handgun, it's just amazing to me. Because that's what you want. You want as much control as possible. It's very close in everything else with some of the competitors, especially the Glock 17. I mean, you could go as far as saying this is a direct 17 competitor, essentially the exact same size. I mean, it's, it's really that close between the two, with the Echelon being uh, more narrow than the Glock, which I, I tend to enjoy. So pause the video if you need to and look at that. It's kind of interesting. Um, a few features with this to highlight are the new COG system and the VIS system, which we'll go over as well. With the VIS system, that is your veritable interface system. So that is going to allow you the capability to put a number of different platforms on this in terms of optics, red dots, and whatnot. And then with the COG system, the really neat thing about that is now this is a competitor to the P320 SIG. I mean, almost directly, because the COG platform is going to allow you to remove the entire firing unit inside the firearm that is the serialized portion. So you, you're going to have aftermarket people going crazy with different grip modules and slides and all kinds of stuff that you can easily ship, which is going to be awesome. So that COG stands for the Central Operating Group. Uh, which is kind of neat. They couldn't call it an FCU, obviously, because SIG has that. But essentially, it is the same thing. And I'll actually show you how to use that. But first, let me show you how to use the optic system, the VIS. So let's take off our optic plate here. And I've taken everything down before. I'll go ahead and preface this with saying that you do need to rely on the manufacturer specs to torque down your optic when you put it up here as well as it's always good to put some blue thread locker on there. 
So you can see all the holes here for different mounting options as well as two peg platforms in the back and two in the front. Now in the front it comes installed with an RMR uh, system here, the little pegs for the RMR platform. I have a 507K X2 that uh, is an extra one I've got. I'm going to put on here and show you how that works. Again, you'll get a set for the shield. I don't know if that'll focus with the light. It's a really bright white paper. And then a set for the Delta Point Pro. And obviously it comes with the R mark. To get these out was a little bit hectic at first, but now I've taken them out a few times so and, and there's not a lot of, um, there's some lubrication in there. So there's not a lot of dryness to kind of stay in there. There we go. All right, so with those two out of the way, the, the X2 has a modified shield footprint. Now on Springfield's website, and I'll show you the VIS chart right here, it's right on their website. You can take a look at what optic you have and what pin set you're gonna need. So with that, um, there are some modifications you'll have to do. For example, with the 507K up here, it says you'll use pin set one. All right, and that is the Trigicon RMR footprint. However, this is a 507K X2, and this has a modified shield footprint. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So with the shield footprint here, you're gonna have two front peg portions as well as the two little um, straight back pegs. Because this is the 507K is modified, we won't use the straight part. So we're gonna get rid of these two little pegs right here that go in the back and not even use them. And something really neat about these, I don't know if I'll, I'll be able to get the camera to show you, but they are labeled. Yeah, you're probably not gonna be able to see that. They are labeled uh, left and right, so you, you'll know which side goes in. Of course, you can, um, if you put it the other way, it's not gonna, it's not gonna line up anyway. But we'll go ahead and just slip that in there. You do have to make sure that it is flush all the way. You can sit it in here and it feels like it's like nice and tight and locked in, but it's not, it has to sit flush. And this is a lot harder in gloves than I thought it would be. The left one gave, has, has given me issues every single time. There might be just a nano fraction of a measurement that's a little bit tighter on this side. I have no idea. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pull it off, off camera so I can actually see it instead of working around a, a camera. So you're gonna you're gonna put these in the the peg holes, line them up, and then what you're gonna do is install your optic. Okay. And when you install your optic, the whole point of this is for the optic to grip this mounting system. And so it, so it can sit flush and kind of be locked in place. And then when that happens, you're able to, you know, um, torque it down and, and do all that fun stuff. So now that I've got these in here, you can see them. You can see that they sit pretty flush. Just a couple little nubs right there. I do have this 507K X2 with a Ranger wrap on it. Uh, I suggest you guys check Ranger wraps out if you want to get a wrap for your optic. And with you see those two indentions in the front, this is going to fit right on top of that. There you go. Until it's nice and flush. See that? Nice and flush. All right. No need for a plate. Oh, I popped it out of there. There we go. All right, so with that there, we're gonna go ahead and just screw this down just for demonstration purposes, not worry about torquing or putting blue thread lock or anything on it. So when that's on there, your optic is on, all right? And you co-witness. Um, I've, I've heard you pretty much co-witness with every optic, but if you guys have this and have a different optic out there, let me know. This is not the optic that I will keep on this. I want a more full-size optic like an RMR type two, maybe an SRO, or even go as far as a, a different Holo Sun, um, something like a, a um, you know, like an EPS or something. I'm just not sure yet. I'll do some research on it. But with that being said, co-witness is always nice, especially on a firearm of this size, because you don't want to be trying to track that too much. 
takedown is super, super easy. So talking about takedown, you will right, slide back, pull down your takedown lever, or in this case, Springfield calls it the disassembly lever, same thing. You do not have to pull the trigger on this one like you do a lot of Springfields. You will simply let the slide go gently and you'll be able to slide this off. So field stripping it, you'll take out the guide rod and the barrel and there you go. She's field stripped. It's literally that easy. Good size guide rod right there. Um, I'm pretty sure that the market's going to have fun with that. They're going to come out with different versions for that. Now let me show you how to take out the cog system, all right? The central operating group, all right? So with the cog system, there's a few things you need to do so you won't mess anything up, and I'll, I'm about to show you. So you want to pull down the pull out the disassembly lever or takedown lever. You'll do that by pushing slightly on on one side of it and then pulling it with the other until you get it loose like that. And then you just cross your fingers, hope and pray, turn it clockwise, and twist and pull until it pops out. That was really, really easy. That never happens. I'm glad that happened on camera. It came out that quickly. So when that's out, because there's no pins in the system anywhere, there's just a whole bunch of places where it catches. So what you want to do is you want to take your slide stop levers right here and push them up. All right. And it's good to do this with one hand. So I'm going to push these up and I'm going to depress the trigger to deactivate the trigger safety. That's going to allow me to pu actually pull this unit, okay? Um, and what you want to do, or push forward rather, what you want to do is see that peg in there? That peg, when it's locked down, looks like that right in front of my thumb. So when you push up and then pull the trigger down, you want to push up and get that peg to slide down the other direction. When you do, this unit actually comes out all right so it'll come out a little bit like that and then all you'll need to do is just work it a little bit until you can get it out of the front catch and those are the front catches right there as you can see they fit into a plastic groove down here and slide back and then that peg holds the um, cog system or get you to focus here in there and then of course in the back you've got that that catches as well so there's three points of contact there but that makes it super easy to take down the only thing that is pinned on this entire firearm is going to be the magazine release lever right there you can see it that's the only thing that's pinned to stay in there all right so while I've got that out I'm going to show you the back strap um, change out because I didn't find any information about this online so uh, some of you might have been confused like me. I don't know. Or maybe I'm just the idiot. But regardless, it's it's very easy. Again, this is not pinned. The, the, and thankfully it's not. Because I like the capability to change out the back straps quickly. Because that helps if you're shooting with some friends or some family. You have different hand sizes. Yes, you can change this module eventually when they come out with more modules for smaller or larger hands. But just being able to change the back straps, you'd be surprised how good that helps and it's really really easy so I'll show you on another back strap here that you have this little tab in the middle see that right there so what you want to do is push that tab from up inside the magazine well you'll be able to feel it and you'll hear it all right you hear that little click so I pushed the tab and now I can bring this down with my thumb and slide it right out it's about a two millimeter post there that goes up into the grip module and holds it in place so you get a small, medium, and large, essentially. Um, it, it ships with the medium, just like the grip module itself. And just taking a look here, I'm going to go with the smaller one. I'm going to put that on. Putting it on is fairly easy as well. You just have to get it lined up just right here. And then you want to continue depressing hard and slide up until you hear an audible click. And there you go. You have changed out your back strap. It's not going anywhere. All right. So really, really simple, really easy there to change that out. Putting back in the cog system here, you want to start at the very front because remember, you've got those tabs that have to fit in there. You're going to depress the trigger once you get it through the guard here, the trigger guard. That allows you to sit this flush. And then all you're going to do is pull back on the, hold on a second. 
I'm a little bit hung up. I did that wrong. All right, and all you're going to do is you're going to pull back on this so you can actually. Hold on a second. There we go. Let me try that again because I got it hung up in there. So you can get it hung up in there. I've actually done that before. I did that the first time I took it down. Here and here's how you you don't do that. You put it at the very very start right here. Depress the trigger and make sure you're still pushing forward when you slip this down. And because you're doing that, you can pop it kind of in place, and then use this bar and see that that notch right there. Just pull it all the way down until that notch is at the start, and then you're in. So you want to make sure you're depressing the trigger when you remove it and when you put it back in. But when you go to push down, make sure that you're still keeping it as far forward as you can until it's seated and then bring it back down. If not, you can get it hung up a little bit because the front catch here will kind of catch on one side and not the other. So that's something to be aware of. Um, it's a lot easier, in my opinion, than the P320 uh, breakdown with the FCU. And with the 365, I just I can do this a lot faster for whatever reason. And then you're going to put back in the disassembly takedown lever just by pushing it in, turning clockwise until you can get that to go all the way through. And everyone knows how much of a pain these are. Get that lined up with the hole on the other side. And you're going to make sure that it stays in the proper orientation so you can clip it all the way in. There we go. Turn around to the other direction. Push it all the way in. And there it is. All right, so putting this back together, I'm going to put the slide back on. Easy peasy. So there you go. Oh, sorry about that. Easy peasy. So there you go. And um, the trigger. Let's talk about the trigger. All right. So. With the trigger, this, this has got to be the best trigger I think I've ever seen um, or ever, ever used on a polymer pistol from the factory. It's just amazing to me. There's a lot of people out there that are getting around three pounds. Um, I've seen reports that it's from the factory it's supposed to be four to five pound trigger or something like that. It, it did not feel that way to me. It's very, very crisp. Very short reset. I mean, it's just, it just, it, it feels incredible. So I wanted to experiment and get our trigger gauge here and do a couple of pulls with you all and see what we get. So let's do a couple of pulls with some different angles and we'll see what we can get out of this thing. All right, that was like one pound, but that's that's gotta be a fluke. Let's try it again. All right, that was 1.12. <laughs> Let's try it this way in this orientation. Bottom of the trigger. All right, that's a little more like it. 3.4. Let's try it again. All right, 3.4 and exactly what we just had. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't think that one read actually. 1.13. I know that can't be right, but I'm I'm do absolutely doing it right. All right, pull again. I don't know, guys. What do you think? You think this thing's a sub two pound from the factory? No way, unless I got a unicorn. I mean, I'm I'm getting I'm getting a pound on all this. Let's go this way. You can see you can see where I'm, I'm pulling from. All right. 0.97 really and you guys tell me I'm doing this wrong here's your natural pool 1.96 so I mean there's there's variations you're gonna see um, again I do think is an extremely light trigger I mean that that doesn't make any sense to me I don't know if that thing is not calibrated or not I will tell you I've done a modification to my Hellcat and made that a one pound trigger pull and this does feel smoother so I, I don't know maybe I'm not crazy or maybe that thing is calibrated I'm not sure but um, regardless 
if you if you use this trigger you'll know exactly what I'm talking about you will absolutely see how good of a trigger it is um, and for all you uh, people that that don't like racking by the optic if you can't beat the hell out of your optic you don't need it on your firearm that's the way I look at it but anyway guys um, it's a really cool firearm I wanted to show you just so you know just so you have the information that the flush fit plate is extremely easy to turn into a 20 rounder that they give you um, and again they give you this so you can do this so they want you to uh, be able to change this out little hole right there you're going to push down in that hole so you can get the spring that's in there to kind of um, just depress a little bit and then push with your your hand on the slide plate and that'll actually unlock it all right hold spring down because it's going to have some some tension on it all right so if flush plate is off then this pad right here is going to help keep everything together so you're going to just um, put it through the hole and go around the bins here until you get it back to the other side and then snap it down so once that is snapped down right there you're ready to actually put the other base plate on you'll push this all the way down keeping that tab on the outside keeping everything else on the inside and then you'll take your extended base plate and slide it through the grooves line that up with the grooves that are on here and you're just going to slide everything on all right and once you get there and you think it's on it's not push down this tab and it will go flush see that it went flush with the rest of it and then there you go you have the uh, 17 rounder you just made it another 20 rounder right from the factory not actually going to insert it in here or show you that because uh, YouTube algorithm stuff for some reason I can show you what I just showed you with the disassembly and field strip but they don't like it when you put a magazine into a firearm even if it's empty kind of silly but that's YouTube for you so anyway guys uh, let me know what you think I'm glad that you took a look at this video I hope it helped you if you've recently purchased a Echelon or were considering it again we're going to fire it in a different video I think a lot of people are firing it right now a lot of people have some excellent excellent reviews on this handgun right now uh, with some you know real world footage on shooting it and the display of its power and capability and things like that I just wanted to kind of bring you some more of the technical specs and how it compares as well as show you about the systems in place and what it, uh, Springfield wants you to do with this. They want you to be able to put pretty much any optic on it. They want you to have the modularity. They want you to have good grip and control. All right. So it, it's a great firearm. There's just no other way about it. I really hope it does well for Springfield. I like Springfield a lot. I think that's pretty obvious if you watch my channel. Just because they've been doing a lot of good things the past several years. And I think that even though this is just another polymer striker fired pistol, at the same time, they still tried to find a way to innovate. And I think they've done that with the VIS. You can say they knocked off SIG or others with modular platform. I say that they took it and kind of improved upon it. Only torture tests and things of that nature will show and, and will tell you whether that's true or not. But at the same time, with the veritable interface system, I could see that eventually going to other firearm manufacturers. They could end up doing something like that or either exactly like that to where you no longer have to worry about your optic platform, which I think is really great because anytime you put a an adapter on there, you're going to lose two things. Number one, you're going to lose some of that reliability because that adapter plate may cause things to get a little wiggly over time or loosen. And number two, you're not going to be able to co-witness as well because you've got the added thickness of that plate in reference to your your um, iron sights. So with this interface system being a lot lower in the slide, being able to mount flush pretty much any optic you want, as well as co-witness, I mean, it's just amazing. It's a really good platform. Kudos to Springfield, and I hope they continue to innovate, even if it's taking the same old things and making them better. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I, I really hope that it helped you guys. Come back for more. I've got some updates on the Hellcat. We're going to go shoot this Echelon um, eventually and get it on camera, that is. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.